started. Um, hello and welcome. Hosh Gildaniz, thank you for joining us to learn about the 2024 Critical Language Scholarship Program and the program application. We're excited that you're considering applying to the CLS program for next summer. The CLS program is a program of the U.S. Department of State with funding provided by the U.S. government and supported in its implementation by our team at American Councils for International Education. Uh, my name is Bo Knudsen, and I am the program officer who works with the Azerbaijani and the Turkish program. I also work with the Portuguese and Swahili programs, um, and I have traveled in the region. Um, I have worked as a resident director for CLS, um, and I'm happy to uh, be here today giving you this presentation and to answer any questions that come up. I'll pass it over to my colleague, Neta, who is helping us with the webinar today. Herkese merhaba, hoş geldiniz. Benim adım Netta. My name is Netta Kaplan. Um, I'm the program assistant here at CLS. Very excited to be joining you today. I did a Fulbright grant in Turkey um, for a year and a half. So always excited to see more people interested in the region and learning Turkish and Azerbaijani. Um, later in this session, we'll also be joined by a CLS Turkish alumna, Josie Krieger, who will also share her insights about her CLS experience with us. Great, thank you, Netta. Um, in this presentation, we will cover an overview of the CLS Azerbaijani and the CLS Turkish programs. Uh, we'll go over the program structure for overseas institutes in general. We'll talk about the benefits of participating in CLS and share with you some tips for writing a compelling application. Feel free to use the Q&A box as we go along. We will have time to, at the end of the presentation to answer any questions that you may have. So just go ahead as we're presenting, drop them in the box. Uh, we might answer you directly or we might discuss your question and answer um, at the end of the webinar. Um, towards the end of the webinar, we will also hear from uh, program alumna Josie Krieger about her experiences on program in Baku and in Ankara. We're going to answer any questions that you have about the application process. Um, and um, yeah, we hope to be able to answer all the questions you have. We have a little bit of time. We expect that this presentation will be uh, about one hour or less. All right, what is CLS? The CLS program is an intensive summer opportunity funded by the US government for American undergraduate and graduate students to study one of 13 languages essential to our engagement with the world. CLS scholars participate in courses and activities offered through partner institutes abroad, developing regional and cultural knowledge and forming connections with local students and instructors. Students interested in studying Azerbaijani or Turkish may apply for the CLS program through which they will study at a CLS institute overseas. Um, I'm going to make a pitch to you um, as to why you might consider studying a Turkic language. Uh, I'll begin with Turkish. Approximately 75 million people speak Turkish as their first language, making it one of the world's 15 most widely spoken languages. Another 15 million people speak Turkish as a second language. In addition to Turkey, uh, Turkish speaking peoples live all throughout the Balkans, the Caucasus and Western Europe. The largest Turkish immigration or immigrant community lives in Germany where Turkish is the second most widely spoken language after German. Turkish is also spoken widely in Cyprus and Greece. Numerous career opportunities exist in sectors as diverse as technology, cybersecurity, energy, hospitality, finance, law, business, and government for speakers of Turkish. For those interested in a career in the public sector, the US government has designated Turkish as a critical language and actively recruits for roles in the areas of diplomacy, intelligence, and the military, as well as offering an array of scholarships and fellowships for students pursuing the language. Studying Turkish also lays a solid foundation for learning other modern Turkic languages like Kazakh, Kyrgyz, Tatar, Uzbek, and Uyghur. While these languages may sound exotic, they are languages that are spoken in regions of strategic importance, like the Caucasus, the Balkans, China, and the former Soviet Union. For this reason, they can be very adv advantageous languages to know. Another Turkic language closely related to Turkish is Azerbaijani. Those who study Azerbaijani can find careers in a variety of fields, including business, consulting, translation and interpretation, foreign service, and intelligence, journalism, lots more. 
There are currently over 30 million speakers of Azerbaijani in Azerbaijan, but also Azerbaijani communities in Georgia, Russia, Turkey, and Iran. CLS offers you the opportunity to gain the equivalent of one year of academic language study over eight weeks. Participants learn to speak, read, and write through the immersive environment, uh, which really emphasizes speaking proficiency gains. Um, there is no language knowledge prerequisite for Azerbaijani or Turkish languages, um, and the program supports beginner level learners every year. If you have previously studied either Turkish or Azerbaijani, it does not need to appear on your academic transcript but you should try to apply at the appropriate level. We have tips on our website to help you determine what level you should apply for based on your experience. And there's space in the application for you to describe your experience and how it meets the proficiency requirement for the level that you're applying to. Um, in addition, after participants arrive to Turkey or Azerbaijan, they will take a placement test on site. Um, and the groups for the classrooms are constructed based on the assessment made by our overseas partners which may not necessarily correspond to your own self-assessment level that you put on the application. The CLS uh, program takes place over the course of eight weeks during the summer uh, at our overseas institutes. Uh, students participate in the program as the member of a group cohort sharing the same schedule over the course of the program, which includes 15 hours of language study every week, cultural activities, local excursions, and um, a overnight group uh, excursion. The CLS is a highly intensive and highly structured study abroad program. Students may not have time in their schedules to participate in independent travel and should not plan on engaging with research or internship opportunities during their CLS summer. The program is academically challenging and rigorous. Every aspect is designed to maximize language gains and the CLS scholars immersion into the host culture. In addition to language courses, students participate in a range of immersive cultural activities. For example, this past summer, CLS Azerbaijani students made an overnight trip to the small town of Lankaran, where students were able to use their Azerbaijani language skills to interact with the Persian ethnic minority Talish community and meet with the ed editor of a regional newspaper to learn how the newspaper helps the community maintain their language and cultural traditions. Participants agree to a language policy that requires them to speak only in the language they are studying. Each participant is paired with a language partner who is a local student or member of the host community to practice speaking outside of the classroom. CLS alumni report that their language partners are often their favorite part of the program and become quick lifelong friends. The CLS program puts a strong focus on students getting the opportunity to connect with the local culture in, in their host country and form friendships with local people. Whenever possible, the CLS program will place students with host families. Um, as Nena mentioned, um, participants on these programs are placed with a language partner for practice outside the classroom. Um, these are often college age students at the host institute um, who have demonstrated interest in intercultural communication, but they're going to stick to the language uh, Azerbaijani or Turkish um, during those sessions that they have with our students. Um, this summer, um, language partners and students did a lot of different things together. They explored Baku and Ankara. Uh, they shopped together. They attended live sporting events. In the past, language partners have also gone to the ballet together or concerts, gone bowling and hiking, or simply spent time uh, exploring the city's parks and chatting. The CLS program in Azerbaijan is hosted in Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan and the largest city on the Caspian Sea and in the Caucasus region. The city is located on the Absheron Peninsula, which juts into the Caspian Sea and is a bewildering combination of old and new with historical markets, large Soviet boulevards and unique modern architecture. Azerbaijan is rich in oil and natural gas resources, and the region is geologically distinct and notable for its close proximity to mud volcanoes and natural gas fire, which blazes continuously on hillsides of the peninsula. 
Oil is produced both onshore and offshore in the Caspian Sea. Azerbaijan's name comes from the Persian words Azer, which means fire, and Baidan, which means protector. The CLS program in Baku is hosted by the Azerbaijan University of Languages and has been hosted by AUL since 2010. AUL prepares its students for continued study at the graduate level and professional teaching careers. The university has three campuses, eight schools of study, and more than 4,000 undergraduate students, as well as over 900 graduate students. AUL is also home to the U.S. Embassy's American Center, which is an internet center and library that offers access to reference tools and research services. As you may already know, the CLS Turkish program is hosted by Ankara University Tomer, which is a CLS partner institute in Turkey. Ankara is Turkey's capital and second largest city with a population of four and a half million people. Ankara University is a public federally funded institution and was the first university founded after the formation of the modern Turkish state in 1923. In the present day, Ankara University is an international research university with 40 vocational programs, 120 undergraduate programs, and 110 graduate programs. Tömer is an acronym for Türkçe Öğretim Merkezi, or Turkish Teaching Center. Tömer at Ankara University was founded in 1984 and was the first Turkish higher education institution to teach Turkish to international students. It remains the only such institution in Turkey until the mid-90s. They have an extremely driven cadre of teachers, language partners, and staff, and their enthusiasm for working with you to improve your language skills, learning coupled with the very friendly nature of Turkish culture will be clear to you from the start. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the um, benefits that CLS participants get uh, through participating on the program. Um, the first benefit that is probably apparent to everyone here is that participants make significant gains in their language abilities on program. In just eight weeks, students complete the equivalent of two semesters of undergraduate coursework. The immersive nature of the CLS program is their language fluency was at its peak after CLS. Students receive certification of their language gains through an actful OPI certificate upon completion of the program. While CLS, while CLS participants have no commitment of service to the U.S. government after completion of the program, alumni are eligible for non-competitive eligibility for U.S. government jobs, which makes pursuing a career in the civil service easier if that is your goal. Proficiency in a critical language, as well as cross-cultural competency, opens doors for alumni seeking further academic and employment opportunities. Studying abroad can help you develop and hone skills that employers seek, such as resilience, adaptability, confidence, and a growth mindset. Alumni frequently speak of the benefit of joining a vibrant and engaged community of international exchange alumni. Fellow CLS program alumni often become a source of support when navigating career decisions or additional fellowships and scholarships post-CLS. CLS alumni also become part of the rich and diverse network of U.S. Department of State International Exchange alumni from other programs such as Boren and Fulbright. So the application for the 2024 CLS program is open now. Um, you can find it on our website uh, at that address, that URL address, address you see on, on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, the application includes three short answer questions and a personal statement. There is no letter of recommendation requirement for the application. There is no interview. We recommend reaching out to your professors and trusted resources on your campus to help you with your essays and your application. Faculty and instructors might have ideas for areas of, or of international interest in your field. A writing center, fellowship or scholarship office, or study abroad office, honors program office. These may be good places for you to get started to get feedback on your essays. It's always important to get more than one set of eyes uh, on your application essay. Um, we want applications from all students or students of all majors and at all levels of language learning, uh, including beginners. We encourage students of all disciplines to think about how critical languages can help their careers. Um, sometimes this might take a little bit of Googling to try and see uh, what sorts of jobs and what sorts of applications for their language skills that people are doing in your field. Successful applicants for the program come from a wide range of backgrounds and are excited to represent 
the diversity of the United States abroad. The program places emphasis on students who are prepared for the rigorous academic program and the intensive nature of the program. With that being said, in your application, it's important to show that you can succeed on the CLS program. That includes addressing your ability to study intensively, your skills at adapting to a group program setting, and your cultural flexibility and maturity. You should also show that you are motivated to pursue Azerbaijani or Turkish study, and that you have a plan for how you will continue learning and using the language in the future. And finally, you need to make a clear connection between Azerbaijani or Turkish and your academic or professional career goals. Thanks, Neta. Uh, I'll just add that even if you are a beginner level applicant, you can, you can still show your motivation as to why you're interested in applying for that language. Um, so, you know, things you're interested in, things you've read, um, any kind of context you have, your knowledge of that language or that culture is going to help you in your application. Uh, so the application is open now. You can not find it on the website now. Uh, the deadline for the CLS program application is November 14th. Yeah, uh, Pacific time. So this means that um, you need to have everything submitted by that time. Um, we recommend that you go in there as soon as possible to look at the application and to start it and submitting everything well in advance of the deadline to avoid any last minute computer glitches that might prevent you from submitting at the deadline. By late January, every applicant will be notified of whether or not they have advanced to the semi-finalist round of selection. The this, this notification is done by email so make sure you include a valid email address in your application that will be good until next spring. Those who advance to the semifinalist round can expect to be notified by early March of whether they have been selected for the CLS program and the CLS award. Students who are selected for the award will have about two weeks to either accept or decline the offer, at which point declined awards will be offered to alternate candidates. Um, when participants are offered the scholarship, that's also when they're going to receive information about um, So please drop any questions in the box. We're going to get to them. Um, but I'd like now to um, take an opportunity to introduce our alumni ambassador, Josie. Um, welcome, Josie. Hi. Hello, everyone. Merhaba, arkadaşlarım. Hello, friends. It's nice to see you. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Cool. Yeah. Um, Josie, thanks so much for joining us. Um, you know, would, would you like to speak a little bit just about um, who you are and, you know, how you participated in the program in the past, your, your home university, and maybe like what you're up to right now? Absolutely. Um, so... My name is Josie Krieger. I am a proud Penn State alumni. I graduated in 2022, which is where I was when I did CLS twice, both for Turkish, but CLS Turkish for a little bit was hosted in Baku in Azerbaijan. Um, so my first time was in 2019 in Baku and my second time was in 2022 in Ankara. Um, in undergrad, I studied history and economics and I, well, I guess I should I get into how I learned about the program maybe and my motivations both? Is that good? Sure. Yeah, that, that'd be great. I don't know if you want me to break it up. Um, well, maybe I should say right now I'm in Washington, D.C. at Georgetown. I'm getting my master's in global human development. Um, but I learned about CLS actually when I did a program in high school called the Kennedy Lugar Yes Abroad Scholarship. So for the scholarship, I was in Bosnia and Herzegovina for a year. Um, I'm born and raised in central Pennsylvania. I never traveled before. I didn't know anything about Eastern Europe, about the Caucasus region, nor about um, Eurasia. And while I was in Bosnia, it was right before um, the presidential elections in Turkey, and Erdogan actually came to Bosnia and he spoke in the city. I didn't attend, but um, the city completely transformed and there were Turkish flags everywhere. And suddenly this language that I didn't really know a lot about was all around me. So I kind of started getting interested just in the geopolitics and Turkey's place in the world. And so I returned, started at Penn State after my study abroad in high school, went to Penn State. And I realized that I was really interested from because of Bosnia and refugee studies and migratory studies as well. And if any of you 
know anything about that field, Turkey is so important geopolitically for refugee and migratory studies. Um, so I kind of dove into that field and I was like, well, I really want to learn the language because I know I'll be working with people who speak Turkish. So that caused me to apply for um, CLS in 2019. And I don't know if any of you are in the same boat as I was in, but I didn't speak any Turkish. My my high school language was French and then I picked up Bosnian, but not a Turkic language. So um, I was nervous, but I ended up going and just meeting the most incredible people. I don't know if I kind of was not listening about the host family. Are there going to be host families this year? in the regions yes my host families were was incredible i had one in 2019 but not in 2022 because of some um because of covid i think but they were so kind and so welcoming i remember when i was leaving baku my host mother and i were like holding on to each other and just sobbing because i just built such a wonderful connection with her she would take me around the neighborhood every day and like show me off to her friends and I could hardly understand anything at first, but then after a while I began to like engage and join these conversations, which was super special. Um, also the friendships that I made, and these are some pictures that I have put together from both trips. Uh, the one of me in the left corner, that was my Turkish class. And the one on the right is two friends that I've made. And since then I've actually seen probably 10 friends that I've made at CLS. A few of them are in DC. Um, a lot of them work in the area and they've just been such great support systems, kind of like what Bo was saying on the just like career hunt, um, but also just as friends, they're really cool people who are like-minded. Um, and yeah, so some advice for the applications. Definitely get started, get started early. The first time I did it, I was very last minute and it was overwhelming and kind of stressful because I just wanted, I didn't really have everything in order. Um, but the second time I turned my application in, I think two weeks ahead of time and it would much better. Um, so that being said, also make sure that you send in your applications to people to get feedback. The more eyes, the better, the more people who can give you feedback, the better, because that's going to build a stronger application. Um, but make sure you give them time to actually give you feedback. That was also a problem for the first time around for me. Um, but yeah, so I'm happy to talk with anyone or I guess answer questions now, but I'll also throw my email in the group chat if anyone has questions that they don't feel comfortable asking here or if they think of something later tomorrow, next week, and you want to ask. Great. Thank you, Josie.